Right, uh, so next up we've got uh, Gemma Barnes and Nigel Jones from HMPPS Digital Studio, which is Her Majesty's Prison and Probation okay. Service Digital Studio, uh, which, are down, which are down, you guys are at um, West Bar, Street, aren't you? Yes. Scotland Street, yeah. um, to talk about the hub. Yep. So Gemma, tell, tell us about what the hub is and what you guys hub. do. So it's a great name, very descriptive. Um, <laughs> we, we, don't like the name we, we inherited, we inherited <laughs> yeah. the name. Um, essentially, the hub. In fact, if you put the slide on it, yeah, okay. you can show. Um, the hub is quite an innovative product in terms of prisons. It's a digital platform for prisoners to use in cell, uh, which provides content that aids their progression and supports them, supports them with information around. Um, their life in prison uh, with a focus on uh, rehabilitation, education, support, guidance, information. Um, and it's in two prisons currently. Okay. Um, it was in installed about two years ago um, through a, a program called the Digital Prisons Program, which installed infrastructure, cabling, and, and internet connectivity in two prisons. The plan was to install it into more. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. but. Um, it w went live in a former state and Nigel and I were put on the team approximately 18 months ago to reinvigorate it, explore further how we can maximise the potential of this project. Okay, so there's, there's there only two prisons in the country that have proper connectivity and Wi-Fi? Two, two public prisons, so... Okay. There are private prisons that have certain provision, but we're two public prisons, HMP right. Berwyn, which is near uh, Wrexham, yeah. HMP Wayland, which is near Norwich. Okay. Why they picked those two, I had no idea. Um, I do know why they picked Berwyn, actually. It's, uh, it's a brand new prison, so it's one of the first ones. So it's built with a digital infrastructure. Okay. Um, Wayland is more um, indicative of the rest of the estate. Right. It's, so that's a conversion. Yeah. So it's... It, it's if we can make it work there, we can make it work anywhere okay. type thing. But yeah. Berwyn was is sort of the exemplar because um, it's a digital prison by default. Okay, so so this is an, uh, an uh, attempt to create a content platform yeah. to go into such so, a prison. Uh, so, so some of the founding principles of it are like um, prison officers spend a lot of time dealing with prisoner admin and they spend a lot of time dealing with prisoner admin because prisoners can't do anything for themselves so it's this this sense of like um helplessness that they've got that means there's a there's a strange concierge relationship between prisoners and prison officers so yeah. they have to ask for everything because they can't do anything for themselves right. and so this is an attempt to redress that balance and looking at um well what are the things that are frequently asked of prison officers and can we start to give time back to them so they can do the job that they're okay. supposed to do. So this is, is like, a, like, like an intranet for a prison it's an intranet. where it's, prisoners it's, can clue themselves up on yeah. how things... Yeah. Um, is that we, don't, we don't tend to use the word intranet. Um, <laughs> <We're just simplifying laughs> technically it is, though. But yeah. technically, it's a, it's yeah. a good analogy. As a way of understanding. Um, but it's kind of one step on from that as well. So yeah. um, s there's a number of prisons that have self-service facilities through kiosks, uh -huh. um, which allows them to do a lot of, of their daily tasks. Um, but we wanted to build on that and not only provide them with answers to immediate questions, but support their journey through um, their sentence to ultimately, our aim is to, towards rehabilitation. So um, rehabilitation is a big issue. It's not something that's easily measurable, but we know that the cost <coughs> of reoffending is approximately 15 billion a year. Yeah. I think just under 50% of um, offenders reoffend within a year. And it's a massive problem and just allowing people to ask questions about how much money they've got in their spends account or when the next visit is, is kind of meeting their immediate needs. But we wanted to, to provide that extra layer of support and guidance and information that allows them to um, build on that and really progress through their sentence plan yeah. and, um, you know, act if they've got challenges or support that they need with potentially substance abuse or behavior or reconnecting with friends and family and getting themselves prepared to come back into society that's a big one yeah. because, because disproportionately prisoners will have to engage with gov services when they when, yeah. they, uh, when they're leaving, so they have to either apply for universal credit or they need housing or something that means that they're in a position not to just go back and do exactly what they yeah, were doing yeah. the day before they got caught and got brought yeah. in. Um, and so if we can introduce, so th there's so many things that this thing could be. Um, so this is an opportunity to introduce some of the challenges are around what actually is this thing, yeah. but this is an opportunity to introduce 
the patterns, the, the gov.uk services, get familiarity with that because some people might have spent the last 15 years in prison and right. digital by default has passed them by. Yeah, yeah. So, so even just engaging with the platform is teaching them about how to use a computer and digital services. There are so many different layers to this about familiarity yeah, yeah. with um, okay. digital services. About a quick look yeah, at yeah, what it going. looks like. Yeah, this just um, is a loop yeah. of the home page as it stands at this point. So, um, so we've used some sort of familiar design patterns. Um, there is a lot of media content on there and we wanted to reuse some of the design patterns that we're all familiar with in terms of like Netflix, iPlayer, Amazon Prime, the kind of media content platforms, um, while integrating kind of the transactional and informational content in there as well. <laughs> Um, this is kind of hot off the press. We did some testing last week and the top section um, is brand new. We're going to be retesting that. It's an iteration of, of a prototype that we tested. Um, but it's moving towards bringing in personalized information which isn't currently available at the moment. It's, it's very much content that's just gen generalized and available to all. Okay. So this is kind of like phase two now. Um, you can probably move on to the next yeah, slide. Yeah, I was now. just going to say, you can get a real sense of it just from looking at the browse by topics to see. Yeah, there's kind of a, topics are important a to really finish. wide breadth of I content. One, on of, there. one of the things that's also worth highlighting is that, is that this whole structure is not, this is not us squirreled away in right. the office on Scotland Street and doing it. Yeah, yeah. We actually go and sit in cell with the prisoners and we're trying to derive what they actually need and what we can help them with and what's useful and what's the, the, the most productive use of our time on there. It's not us saying yeah. this is good for someone, this is us, a collaborative exercise, and even to the, to the extent that last week we were sat with That's some right. lifers in yeah. Wayland yeah. doing some sketching. Yeah, so this is an actual cell, this is one of the tests, um, we don't uh, picture any of the individuals specifically, but this is somebody's actual cell. Um, and how they have it set up. So we do a lot of contextual research. We can't get participants to mm. come to us for obvious reasons, so mm. we go to them. But it really adds a lot to the experience of understanding the cramped space, the length of the cable, how yeah. they can interact with the really crappy laptops that they get given. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it and of really- of they don't actually have internet access. Either, no, so they don't have internet. It's all, offline. yeah, it's a closed network that is just yeah. within the two prisons. Um, so it's very locked down. Yeah, and it's probably also worth saying that Gemma as a service designer did the first bit of work that the MOJ has ever done on mapping actually what prisoners do in a day. It was ne it's never been understood That's before amazing, about how, how, do, how do they actually, what do they do when they get up in the morning? What do they do? What do they have to do then? What are the things that are important to them? Yeah. And this was a whole mapping exercise that has been sort of enlightening for the MOJ as an organization to go, actually, we can start to use this as something that informs all the services that we provide in terms of rehabilitation. So what was it like for you guys? I mean, you know, you've been a service designer for a lot longer than working at HMPPS and you're a content designer. Mm -hmm. Presumably you've done lots of other work on more commercial things. Sure. Uh, how are you finding engaging with the prison service and with prisoners in this very kind of this is the best job I've ever had? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Because you're making a, like a really because you're making a real challenge. you've got the opportunity to make a real difference to yeah. to some people who like it's you have to detach yourself from maybe what the thing that they've done. So the gates have closed on it and justice is is being served on them. But mm. actually who do you want coming out at the other end? Do you want somebody who's been ignored has had no hope or opportunity. That absence of hope is massive. Mm. But actually, if you take someone and say, okay, you're going to serve a sentence, but what are we gonna do with you while you're with us, while you're in our care? And it's, as a content designer, my work is often involved in like the language of how we talk about prisoners. So you could talk about prisoners as the cons that have committed this serious offense and they need to be punished. But as a thought exercise, you could also go, these are people that are in our care mm. because often they, you know, before they're ever a perpetrator, they're a victim. When you start existing in their space, I don't want to say you feel sort of empathy for them, but you have to feel no, empathy for them. It's and you, and you, black and white. It's, it's, it's not just black and white. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that, that sense of giving people who've never had an opportunity or hope before something to cling on to that they can come out with and not just do the same thing again. Yeah. That's, you know... It matters to me. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember the next slide now. <laughs> okay, so this is um, just a screen grab of a feedback mechanism that we implemented um, earlier in the year. And this is really important because quite often it's difficult to get feedback from the users. Um, and also it really feeds into um, this concept of procedural justice and giving them a voice. Mm -hmm. And even in a small way, allowing them to... Um, 
respond to the content that we're putting on there. Um, so ge as just as general user feedback, it's really interesting, but it also helps us measure engagement and make sure that we're um, able to put content on there that is meeting their needs and engaging them and stimulating them. Um, and it's been really, really useful. And we've got um, some fantastic stats around that. Um, and we get a lot of comments and hardly any abuse, which was quite surprising because we thought yes, that might so be the case. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was a really simple way for us to just get that immediate feedback. But it is being used, and it's I guess a, yeah. prisoners do want to Absolutely. give you their comment on it. And, 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 yeah. and I suppose the, only, the, the last point I'd like to make is that we do have content teams that are of prisoners because we're, we're really. One of the foundations, yeah. um, one of the two things that we're really keen on, we're not here to replace the essential human interactions that are needed for progression, so we're there to support it. What can we do extra that helps people, that, that supports and enhances that human interaction? And it's almost that wherever we can use authentic voice, we do so we get the prisoners to produce content for each other because it's, it's all well and good me standing there and, and or me producing some content and saying, this is good for you, but it's completely different. It lands completely yeah. differently if it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah. I've lived this experience and it's not, you know, we're not bullshitting you on this. It's like, it's real. So, you know, unfortunately, we, that we, you did send me a video that we're not really able to show because it's not... It's we not don't know who he publishing. is, but... Yeah, yeah. But it, it, was a, it was a video of a, an, an inmate um, basically t um, reciting a poem that... It, yeah, it so we, we gave them the brief of, like, if you were to produce content um, that supports progression, what would you do? And it, it's really inspiring, actually, the, what, some of the stuff that they came back with. And this was a video that was, it was a poem that was fi written, filmed, edited, all on site, uh, and then shared in the two prisons. And it's about somebody's personal experience of recovery. Um, the only reason we can't show you it is because, I mean, we had a debate over it, and it's because I genuinely, I don't know who he is, mm. and yeah. I can't... He never intended it yeah. to be published on the open internet. Yeah, and that's one, one of the things, films, but so it would be... That's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's, really, it's, it's great to show people. I think some people might have seen it, but... Yeah. Um, I guess the last thing for me, because I know we're a bit over, but is just the importance of that co-creation, um, not only with content, but with the actual interface and the platform itself. So the previous slide was just a, a, an image of us doing some wireframe and some sketching with um, some of the prisoners themselves. Yeah. So right through from creating the information architecture um, and the actual interface designs and iterating and getting usability testing and feedback directly. Um, we're not the experts, we don't use this thing. It's really important for us to understand that. So I think the, the blend of the interface being designed by them and the content being designed, designed by them and for them um, just really hits home that you so know we're, we're sort of enablers in this process. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and the thing that you just showed with the Berwyn Times—that's yeah. that's almost like um, there's a prison newspaper that's produced, but there's there's problems inherent in the production of the prison newspaper. It costs money. There's an overhead on the prison, but actually everybody's got a laptop, and we can make this digital it's like every newspaper is going in right. the world and it's dragging prisons into the 21st century when they've sort of missed out the 20th century yeah, yeah. it's just been stone age well, to, they've gone back to, to, to now go in properly okay. hyper local news haven't yeah they? and it's yeah. uh, hyper local news so yeah. so they think well and, it, and and that again is an attempt to address that there's nothing for me here there's nothing going yeah. on so th so it's highlighting opportunity but also there's there's just things going on because there's, there's there's people here, uh, living in a space, and there's community, and th there's, there's all these things that you, that you might not think are happening there, but actually they are. They're just people living in a certain situation, yeah. and they're going to come out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're bringing them digital media for the first time, I guess. Yeah. So Sometimes, congratulations. Yeah. It's Often. a really, it's a really great set of work you're doing, and it seems pioneering. So congratulations, uh, HMPPS Digital Studio. Thank you.